Hi there, it's Sue, and thanks for joining me for Tips and Talk Day. These are bite-sized topics that I pull from community questions and things that I'm observing in the world of handmade small business. If you'd like to submit a topic, DM me over on Instagram at giftbizunwrapped. Gosh, this year I've rolled out a number of new opportunities for you here. There are the bashes, where you have a chance to showcase your business to this entire listening audience. There's the new OWL app, when you have a quick question where you'd like my input. And now, I'm excited to bring you Gift Biz Boosts. Think of these as free strategy sessions, leaving you with a clear action plan to boost you forward. Whether you're at the beginning of your business journey and need concrete steps on how to start, or you've been doing this for a while and could use a fresh approach, these boosts are for you. You'll know a podcast is a boost if you see that word in the title. Want to get your own free boost? I'm taking these on a first-come, first-served basis. Head over to giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash boost and sign up for your session today. Ever since I can remember, I always like to dream up and create little side ventures. When I was really little, I was the doctor in my pretend veterinary clinic. My patients were my stuffed animals who had terrible ailments, broken legs, bite wounds, and sicknesses of all sorts. Every morning and throughout the day, I'd check in on them and check their progress charts. I'd give them their medicine. (laughs) which was little rolled up papers stored in real leftover medicine bottles. And I wanted to always ensure that they were on the road to recovery. This was my little baby business for, I'd say, well over a year. My first money-making venture was the traditional lemonade stand and later selling Girl Scout cookies. I even tried my hand at creating and selling a woman's fashion accessory very early on. But even through all that, I really never thought I'd seriously start a business of my own. After college, I had my share of a few short-term, unsatisfying jobs, where I put in my time, learned what I could, and moved on. My significant corporate career actually came about pretty quickly, about two years after I graduated. There, I learned sales, marketing, and management skills. I consider myself wildly fortunate to have been intimately involved with many small boutique shops and quite a few big brands too, like Osco Drug, McDonald's, and a company which was called Main Street that's now Kohl's. I had an up-close and personal look at things I never realized would serve me so well when I did start my own businesses, and they often now pop up in my coaching discussions today too. Traveling, working with fabulous people, finding out that strategic business planning was a passion, and building a dynamic sales team, if I must say so myself, all got checked off my list. As I climbed the corporate ladder, I found myself in the running to head up one of our 20 nationwide production facilities. It was then that I realized that if I continued on this path, a path that I loved, It would also keep me away from my young children. And this was time I could never get back. There's no pause button on children, and they are my priority. So no matter how sad I was to walk away from a very fulfilling career, that's exactly what I did. I spent five wonderful years at home as a full-time, quote-unquote, traditional mom I headed up Creation Station, a publishing department for students writing in the grade school. I took positions on the PTA. I coached my children's AYSO soccer teams and was fully integrated into their childhood. These were the most amazing years. But even so, my love of business kept buzzing around in my head. For a moment, I thought of going back to my past company because they kept calling me (laughs) and checking in to see when I'd be ready to return. That, however, would put me back in the same place of being away all the time. So not an option. As I was talking all this through with my husband one night, he said something to me that changed everything. 
He said, Sue, why don't you start a business of your own? You've been telling everybody else how to be successful and grow their business for years. Why not do it yourself? OMG, instant light bulbs. Yes, that fit into my mind perfectly. To this day, I still can't even believe I never considered it myself. I mean, really. Why did it take someone else to suggest it? In a way, give me permission to even consider it. Now, this was almost 20 years ago, and back then, times were different than they are today. Today, starting your own business, the whole entrepreneurial thing, is much more widely accepted than it was back then. Once this idea of my own business was in my head, it wouldn't go away. Except now, what type of business should I start? Once again, Michael to the rescue with some great advice. He told me to consider the qualities my business needed to have and then list 10 types of business that would fit the bill. The most important thing for me was that I could still be available when my children were home and to participate in their activities. Definitely no travel. Something that was fun and had the potential to make decent money, of course. I don't remember all the types of businesses on the list, but the final two were a gift basket business and investing in a wine shop franchise that I envisioned would be on Central Avenue in our downtown community. At the end, I chose the gift basket business because that I could do out of the house. With that, basket time was born. When this decision was made, I had never built a gift basket in my life, but I knew my strategic business angle. I wanted to target small businesses and use these gifts as a way to recognize and show appreciation, leading to higher retention of employees and customers. That is trackable in the numbers. Nobody else in the industry had this approach, and I was able to use all my corporate training to become more than a vendor to my clients. That was the vision and how I would set myself apart. I had a lot to learn about the gift basket business. It was such fun researching, developing professional basket building techniques, and sourcing product. That probably was my favorite. Lots of tasting and sampling. (laughs) Once I was ready to flip on the switch to be open for business, I immediately went into my community to get my new business known. I joined the Chamber of Commerce, several actually, and BNI Group. My very first sales were from these organizations, and also my first large corporate contract, which came through connections from networking. This corporate account eventually kicked me out of the house. It became too big to manage from home, so I moved into a production facility and brought on employees. And it was up from there. Basket Time was a fabulous business that was growing and making great money as I phased it out. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But I found something else that sounded like even more fun and even more challenging. And boy, was it ever. I'm referring to the Ribbon Print Company, which is one of my businesses up and running today, in addition to Gift Biz Unwrapped. I wanted to share my experience with you today to point out five significant things. One, you don't need to wait for anyone's permission to start your business. And if you are, I give you that permission right now. Two, before you start, Think of what you want in a business and consider multiple options before making a final decision. As a handmade product maker, this would be selecting only one type of product, so you become known as a specialist in that craft. Three, the easiest way to get your first sales are at in-person events. Craft shows, festivals, and farmer's markets are perfect for this and also help you validate that what you're offering has a market and people who will buy it. Four, think about your past experiences and how they might add value to what you're doing today. If you make lotions, do you have additional knowledge from the time you were a nurse? If you make jewelry, can you apply experiences from your time in the theater? 
For me, it was merging my strategic business knowledge to help other businesses grow through gift baskets. Who would have thought? And five, your business may morph into something else over time. Allow room in your brain for that expansion, even if it's a complete change like mine was. Perhaps this review of my past has you thinking about what you do in a whole new way. Maybe there's another angle you can add, having listened to me. Each of us is an original, and applying that to your business makes your company truly one of a kind. That's a wrap. I'm a get-to-the-point kind of girl, and this is what you can expect from these quick midweek sessions. Now it's your turn. Go out and fulfill that dream of yours. Share your handmade products with us. We want them, and they bring us both so much happiness.